It's 2014 and the developers of Old School RuneScape have made their most radical decision yet. They want to expand the game's landmass by over 50% with a brand new continent filled to the brim with content for every type of player. This is the story of Zaya and how when it launched it was an absolute disaster. In 2014, Old School RuneScape had been around for a little over a year. The development team had grown from a measly three people to four. They were finally at a point where they were putting out small but consistent updates that the player players enjoyed, but one team member dreamed bigger than just small updates. He wanted something enormous. Meet Mod Reach. He had been with the old school team since the very beginning and was the mind behind a lot of the game's earliest updates. But with every update that was released by the team, he noticed one consistent complaint. They were ruining the nostalgia of RuneScape. Now keep this in mind. Old School was launched almost entirely for nostalgia purposes after a string of bad updates made to RuneScape. So a large chunk of players would get pretty upset when I guess you could say historic landmarks were defaced by new updates. People to this day still complain about how ugly an out of place Nightmare Zone is, which, not gonna lie, it really is ugly. So because of these complaints, Reach figured, why don't we just make a new continent? We can put all the big new updates there so it doesn't ruin the nostalgia of the mainland. He pitched it to the team and was told, make a case for it and we'll do it. So he immediately got to work trying to get everything out of his head and onto paper. I reached out to Reach, <laughs> get it? And he actually provided me with the initial drawings he created. Now keep in mind, this was all very early stuff. This new continent would house five joinable families, a new combat system, no, not like that one, and Old School's first ever raids. Yes, not one raid, but multiple. This was Old School RuneScape's biggest project ever, and don't forget, the team only had four people. I feel like if I was one of them, I'd get home from work, collapse on the couch, and just watch movies until I fall asleep. Like maybe Hotel Transylvania. Aha, Donovan! Which isn't available in my country. Well, luckily, I have today's sponsor to help me out, ExpressVPN. They're a cheap, fast, and easy to use VPN service that comes with a number of perks. First of all, movies like Hotel Transylvania aren't available on Netflix in the US, so I just open up ExpressVPN, change my location to Canada, and I can watch anything I want on Netflix Canada. ExpressVPN has servers in almost 100 countries, so you can access all their Netflix libraries too. But that's just one perk. They're also great for privacy. They block your internet service provider from snooping on you, hide your IP from websites, and have a no logs policy, meaning they don't keep track of what you do. Without ExpressVPN, your ISP can see exactly what websites you visited and sell that information to advertising agencies. I have just one more bonus for you. My viewers can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash colonello or clicking the link in the description below. Anyway, soon after the initial concept, Reach decided to post a thread on Reddit asking players for their suggestions. He also mentioned that the continent would include the game's first Uber quest. Again, not that one. This thread reached the top of old school Reddit with the vast majority of players being extremely excited. We didn't hear much about this new continent until two months later when the first development blog was posted. First, it included Port Roberts, a large floating platform off the coast filled with pirates and lawbreakers. By helping the pirates fight against the Gnome Armada, you'd be able to get better deals in shops, use their fishing spots, and purchase illegal goods. Those who aligned with the Gnome Armada instead would be met with hostility upon entering town. Second was the Colosseum, a large Roman-styled arena where PvP tournaments would take place. In the town surrounding it, you'd be able to charter to places like an underwater city. Four months go by and Jagex decided it was time to put all their cards on the table. They'd be pitching the new continent at RuneFest and pulling it soon after. Finally, the continent had a name, Zaya. How did they come up with it? Reach thought it sounded cool and snappy, so he just went with it. In this presentation, they started with the five joinable families. To keep it brief, five families are at war because the King of Corinth has died and they all want the throne. Essentially, you could pick one family, gain favor with them by doing tasks, and receive benefits. Non-player characters would treat you differently based on your faction, and you'd actually be able to engage with those same characters and sway them to side with your family. This was groundbreaking compared to the rest of old school. On the mainland, you could beat up the same character over and over again, day and night, and they'll still greet you with- Wait a minute, who are 
you. Next, they previewed the game's first ever raid, the Paradigm of Exodus. It would be a huge randomly generated dungeon in a volcano where at the end you'd fight a massive dragon. If you look closely, you can actually see its tail wrapping around the outside of the volcano. Lastly was Kaurum, an ancient city inside another volcano. It would contain an ancient race related to the Tazar. They were slayers who would maintain the balance between life and death. The poll came out soon after with the entirety of Zaya just being one question, which passed with over 90%. The team got to work and even set a deadline of summer 2015. That would mean they would have anywhere from six to nine months to complete this entire project. How long would this project take to complete? You're looking at a good six months plus. Mm. The team had grown to seven members, but it was about to lose the most important one for Zaya's development, Mod Reach. In April of 2015, Reach was dismissed from Jagex for reasons that to this day are still unknown. There's a ton of theories out there, but nothing conclusive. Zaya was entirely Reach's idea, and the team was unsure of what to do next. Internally, the old school team went under a pretty big restructuring, and Zaya was seemingly put on hold for a while while they focused on other updates. Ultimately, Zaya wasn't cancelled, and would reappear during 2015 RuneFest. Besides going more in depth on what the five families were, no new content was really presented. The previously discussed Port Roberts had been cancelled, and some of its concept was absorbed into one of the families. Kelrum wasn't mentioned at all, and neither was the UberQuest. The most important thing that came out of this presentation was that Zaya finally had a release date. The first phase would be released in January of 2016. Rather than release the whole continent, they'd be releasing its largest chunk, the Kingdom of Karend. It would include all of the five families. The Paradigm of Exodus was scheduled to release in June of 2016 and the Colosseum in January of 2017. Over the next few months, Jagex would release a few developer blogs showing sneak previews of content and even show some content being made on stream. But ultimately, Zaya was still pretty shrouded in mystery. As the release date got closer, there was a lot of excitement, but in the background, a lot of nervousness began to bubble up. Players really hoped that this update could live up to its massive expectations. The update finally went live in January of 2016, and for most players, it was, well underwhelming. One thing that the team hoped to accomplish with Zaya was bringing back a sense of adventure and exploration. They wanted you to be able to explore a new part of RuneScape for the first time, like when you were a kid. But it didn't feel like RuneScape at all. The graphics looked nothing like the mainland. They just didn't fit with the rest of the game. Not to mention, Karend was absolutely massive yet empty. The scale was easily two times bigger than it needed to be. Traversing it took forever because almost no teleports existed. Most places in RuneScape are dense, packed to the the brim with either buildings or forest, and usually have a couple teleports to allow you to get around. Zaya had almost none of that. The buildings they did have were just absolutely humongous. Half of them were left mostly empty and served no purpose. In terms of activities, there wasn't really much to do either. There wasn't even a single quest or boss. You could do things like go mining at the blast mine or runecraft at the dark altar, but those involve gaining favor with the five families I previously discussed. Which leads me to my next point. The family system that actually released kind of didn't live up to the hype. None of them actually looked like they were at war. Karend honestly looked pretty peaceful. The tasks you had to complete to gain favor in families were also extremely tedious and the rewards they provided were mostly lackluster. If you tried to get immersed in the faction's lore by speaking with people, you'd usually be met with just a barrage of memes. Plus, none of the people would actually treat you differently based on your faction. To them, you were just some random adventurer, even to the faction you belonged to. No big faction events ever ended up happening either. Worst of all though, was while you were gaining favor, you would check your progress with this box, which took up most of the screen and couldn't be closed. Zaya did do a couple things right though. Things like the previously discussed new runecrafting altars and blast mine were great great alternatives to what I'd consider boring skills. Although Zaya wasn't the prettiest, it achieved its job of not destroying the original RuneScape map in a pretty creative way. The team also had plans to introduce more content over the coming months. At first it was just general fixes and a few new transportation methods, but a few months down the line, an entire Slayer dungeon with a new boss named Skatizo was added. A bit later than that, they added Wintertoad, RuneScape's first ever skilling boss that is still popular to this day. But even with all these nice new content additions, the island still looked weird. It was still one big, mostly empty square. But everything changed when a Reddit user named Gentle Tractor posted this image to Reddit. It was his reinterpretation of Zaya. It got close to 9,000 
10,000 upvotes, which was just absolutely massive at the time. And as a result, the old school team quickly noticed that it was time to actually fix Zaya. In November of 2016 came the Karend rework. It made the island look so much more natural and alive. Gentle Tractor's post was so inspiring to the team that they even added this ancient machinery as a reference. Zaya was finally starting to look like how the team pitched it to be. If we fast forward to today, Zaya is fantastic. The continent is still gradually being improved both visually and content wise. Although the paradigm of Exodus was scrapped, it was replaced with the Chambers of Zarek, one of the best pieces of content in the game. Kelrulm was also later added, and with it came a new Slayer Master, tons of new monsters, and the Alchemical Hydra boss. The island's lore is also fantastic and contains a number of quests to help you learn it. Best of all, gaining favor with a family is much faster and far less tedious. Plus, now you can join every family without it affecting your favor in others. Also, you can actually minimize the favor box. Although we never got the Colosseum, the Uber Quest, and much of the island is still unmapped, Zaya has an extremely bright future. The old school team changed Zaya from a complete disappointment into one of the game's best pieces of content ever. If old unreleased content interests you, then you might also be interested in Merodak, old school RuneScape's hardest boss that nobody has ever actually fought. The link to that video should be on screen right now, and I hope to see you there.